Next, let's take a look at our asset RPG. Let's dive inside. By the way, you will notice that very often when you open a geometry node, you will see that the visibility and sometimes template flag is set to a null called nath uh, nothing. This is just a work practice because sometimes you have a chain where there is a lot of stuff going on. And if I happen to leave a visibility flag here, uh, every time I open the geometry node, it will have to compute everything up the chain. To avoid that, I leave my visibility flags on nodes called nothing. Okay, we have our um, FBX geometry. It is an RPG rocket with a bunch of uh, ammunition. We don't really need the whole thing. That's why we are isolating only a part of it and transforming it to make it smaller. This is the rocket that we will be using. After that, I am just straightening in it so that it's easier for me later to move it and animate. And I'm moving it to the center of the world. Then we'll just uh, will be much easier for us to get started if everything is organized and starts in the center. After that, I am creating separate groups for the tail and for the fins, uh, just so that later we can in introduce some rotation on the fins. And we have another node here, lob test 02. Okay, let's go and check if we broke anything or not and if our RPG is working. I'm pressing 2 on my keyboard. Remember, we set our quick mark in uh, lobnet to react to 2 on the keyboard. If you have not done that before, please press Control 2 here. Okay, let's zoom in. And this is our lob test 002. We have this SOP import RPG. I'm putting a visibility flag on it, pressing space G to zoom onto it. Here we go. This is our rocket. Uh, here in the lob net, I'm using the same camera and the same light as we used earlier, just adding RPG in the chain down. After that, I'm doing the same thing I did with the materials uh, for the helicopter. There, is, there are two materials, green and black. They are very simple, material standard surface with just a color applied to it. And the same for black, same material standard, material X standard surface with a color applied. And after that, these materials are assigned to um, my RPG. Okay, I can see I did not even assign the black one for this test, at least the green one is working, okay? Because our rocket is going to be traveling extremely fast. Um, I tested and really applying the texture doesn't even, it's not even worth it. Here we will uh, get away with just color. It's gonna work because the speed is gonna be very, very fast and everything is going to be motion blurry. We're moving into a new section called asset preparation. Many people underestimate how important it is, because if you do not prepare your geometry and your collisions properly, you're in for so much pain afterwards. Uh, so right now, let me show you how I prepared the colliders of our buildings for you. Let's dive inside. Uh, this is quite a lot of nodes, but don't worry, a few of those operations are repetitive, so it's actually quite simple. I'm going to view things from the camera and I'm going to turn on my headlight and close the geometry spreadsheet so that I have only the buildings in the view. Uh, if you look by default, this is packed Alembic, so we want to unpack it. But even after unpacking, we still have some poly soups. So we're converting everything to polygons. Now we have proper polygon geometry. Right away, you might notice that those buildings are... Uh, not perfect collision geometry. They are not watertight. We still ha we have some one-sided polygons here with uh, what seems like normals facing the wrong direction. So this is something we'll need to fix. Uh, first, I'm splitting the ground and I have my ground here. Later, if I need to uh, use it for collisions, I have it here. So now let's move on to the buildings. Uh, first, I'm splitting the three front buildings because they are closer to camera and we will pay more attention to them. And the ones in the back, uh, we will treat them as uh, mostly like watertight cubes. If you are working on a real production, most likely the geometry of the buildings would have more details and it would be uh, looking more than the actual buildings on set. But in our case, this is what we have. That's what we have to work with. So we'll have to do some modifications manually. 
let's take a look at our first building. First, we're uh, sp splitting the decorations and the building itself so that we can uh, optimize them separately. Uh, so let's create a bound of our building. I'm going to put a template here. So this is a bound of my geometry. And then I'm creating a Boolean so that I can separate just this top part. What I'm doing is polyfilling it. So I have a watertight geometry, reversing the normals and recomputing the normals. So now I have a watertight top of my geometry. I am computing the normals of the bound that I created earlier. And I'm polyfilling these uh, decorations just in case there are some holes in them. In this case, I think this is not really needed. No patches were created, but I will leave this note here because remember this setup might be uh, spread over other shots where your building geometry might have this. So let's leave it here. Let's merge everything back together. Now we have uh, move more of a watertight geometry. We are doing a little bit of a poly extrusion to the bottom here, and we are just adding a name attribute to it to this building called building underscore zero one. Uh, why are we extending here uh, the building below the ground? Is because we will have quite fast moving helicopter dust, and if the building is on the ground and then we have a ground collision, what might happen is you might have really, really, really tiny space between the building and between the ground. You will have dust going in there and it will slow down your simulation tremendously. I've experienced that. So let's avoid that and we'll make sure no dust goes under the building. Uh, because we will be using those buildings for particle simulations, for RBD and for pyro simulations, what we need to make sure is that we have both geometry colliders, this is this, and we also have volume colliders. So I'm taking this geometry using VDB from polygons. So I'm creating a surface uh, VDB that is called collision. I'm naming it collision right away because this is what, for example, PyroSolver by default expects so that I don't need to rename it in a PyroSolver later. I'm creating my uh, volume collider with proper naming right away. And after that, what I'm doing is I'm removing some of the volume in the back just because um, less voxels, less things to compute, less space this geometry is going to take. What I could have done is extended this uh, box, for example, and made it a little bit bigger so we can clip this part here at the bottom. Okay, and after that, this is our uh, building first, first building volume. After that, let's take a look at our second building. Splitting second building here. I'm splitting decorations like before, and I'm doing a very similar operation here where I create the bound of the geometry, which is pretty much just encapsulates this into a box because before you could see this geometry is uh, not perfect. There are holes. When I create a bound, the holes are gone. And then we have our top that is left and I'm merging them back together. Now we have here, for example, this awning was uh, fine. It had some thickness to it, so we don't need to uh, polyfill like we did with the other building. After that, if you look through the camera and let's look at our plates here. So let's go into our camera and let's navigate here into the view and put our plates, our footage in the background. So let's go into plates, undistorted and undistorted JPEGs. We have our uh, buildings here in the background now. So let's jump back where we were. Now we can see, let me just put a null here. And you can see that this building has those holes at the bottom. And if I have really strong dust from the helicopter and may, maybe even some helicopter pieces going in there, I would want to have those holes in my geometry as well. Otherwise, I might face, situ face a situation where there is dust going up here like there is a wall. So we need to fix that and we need to create some of those holes. And what is happening here? I'm just creating some spheres manually placing those spheres while looking at things in the wireframe mode. And I just try to adjust my spheres 
in the end I'm remeshing the whole thing. And we have our geometry of the building with the three holes. We can look at the hidden line. We can also right click here at the bottom right, turn on color correction and increase our exposure to see, yes, it looks like my arches are aligning here. Um, trust me on that. I spent quite some time adjusting those uh, arches there in exactly this manner. Okay, let me bring back our original exposure. And what we did before is we are doing the same thing. Oh, let me go back to my flat wire shaded. And we are creating a volume collider from this building. And a very similar process is happening for building three. That's what we have here. Exactly the same process. What you will also notice is there is this truck here. And first I did not have this truck as a collider. And when I was working on the helicopter downwash dust, I noticed that having a collider or geometry representing this truck here would be a really nice addition. So here you will see that we have a little bit of a box with some mounted noise to it. I'm not going to model a whole car just for this purpose, but I will create something that represents a, a kind of a, an even geometry over there. So we have our car volume. What else we have is uh, here a few boxes that uh, represent some geometry there. So there are some fences there, so we don't have the uh, downwash dust going into the no uh, into nowhere. Where is my null? Put visibility on it because you can see there's actually some fences and they should block our dust. And this is pretty much it. This is the volumes that we created and we have the, the same for the back buildings. Uh, right here, we created some volumes for the back buildings. Simple blocks. For the sake of this uh, shot, this is good enough. But again, if you're working on similar shots in the sequence and you got proper buildings, good for you. Or uh, you will have to um, adjust your geometry and make um, similar adjustments as we are doing here. One more thing before we go is, you know, we have those buildings here. And as I told you, we will be doing some particle simulations on those buildings. For example, when pieces of the helicopter hit the building, there will be particle seam of uh, dust source going down. And for particle simulation, I would love the surface to have first some more resolution and then some more detail. So what I do is first I fuse this geometry. I clip it so that I care only about the front-facing part. After that, we polyfill the back of those buildings. We remesh them. We add some mountain. And we turn them into a volume. So this is going to be my interesting surface on which when the particle hit, uh, particles hit, they can have a little bit of an interesting path down. I have this volume cached. Uh, please cache it on your side. And after that, we are creating a geometry representation of the same buildings by simply converting them from VDB to polygons and computing some normals.